A very good evening. Nine African National Congress terrorists have been shot dead in separate clashes with the South African police. Minister of Law and Order, Mr. Adrian Flock, said the terrorists have been instructed by the ANC hierarchy to perpetrate large-scale acts of terror in South Africa to coincide with the so-called Soweto Day anniversary. The nine died in shootouts near the Swaziland border. On the night of June 8, 1988, five ANC members travelling in a minibus was shot dead by a special team of security policemen. Four days later, another four activists died in similar circumstances. This is how the SABC reported the incident. Acting on information received, police set up a roadblock approximately seven kilometers outside Pitratif on the road to Swaziland. At approximately nine o'clock that evening, this vehicle was stopped at the roadblock. A black man jumped out and opened fire with an AK-47 rifle. The police immediately retaliated. The policemen who had been waiting for the group were well prepared, and within seconds it was all over. The minibus, which had been disguised as a taxi, was riddled with bullets and police discovered several documents inside. The news bulletin never mentioned who the policemen were. Convicted murderer Colonel Eugene de Kock and his Flockplast death squad. As always, the men didn't take any prisoners. No survivors to tell the tale of death. A former Flockplast policeman, Sergeant Leon Flores, told us his version of the incident. I can't give the exact detail how we did the layout and the planning because for the future those type of plans may be used again. So I can't divulge information regarding that. But the people waited, Flakplas members with Peter Tief members, for the people to infiltrate. And what happened is the people obviously, being armed, uh, when they realized there was problems, fired on the, the group stopping them and there was crossfire. And the same basically happened three days later on another group that came through. Strange things happened after the shooting. One of the security policemen who participated in the shooting, Warrant Officer Frederick Pinar, was appointed as the investigating officer. He immediately burned the clothes of the dead, explaining at the inquest that he was afraid that they might have had AIDS. What were the men hiding? Tonight, we provide some answers to the plea of a sister of one of the deceased. They showed the photos of our sister as well as other people who had died. They were all naked and they said we should point out my sister. We were told that they had died and they never explained anything. This is Martina Schrabler, a former policeman. On the two nights in June 1988, Hrabla was the charge of a sergeant on duty in the Petrativ police station. He holds vital clues to what happened to the activists. We interviewed him in Sydney, in Australia, where he has been living for several years. So I was in the police station uh, that night and that afternoon. Uh, some of the security branch officers got into the police station and blew out some firearms. And uh, I was approached. Uh, they pulled me aside and said, listen, you just keep this area clean tonight. Uh, nobody's allowed to attend any complaints in this area. Uh, no motor vehicles is allowed to go into this area. And I asked them what's going on, and they said it's operation. Shortly afterwards, police again set up a roadblock on this road, and this vehicle was also stopped. The driver of the vehicle opened fire with a Russian-manufactured pistol. Police returned the fire, and the driver and passengers died in a hail of bullets. According to the uh, official records, I said it was a roadblock and none of these officers were in uh, police uniform. They all were wearing jeans, tackies and t-shirts. I mean, who's going to stop for them? I'm not going to stop in the middle of the night if some guy jumped out in front of me with a machine gun and say, well, police, I'm going to go right through him. In his statement, Mr. Flock said the police had shot and killed two heavily armed groups of terrorists in the face of extreme danger and under difficult conditions absolutely crap. If they found police procedures, or if they found evidence, they have to hand it into the police charts of a sergeant who put it into the official books and then hand it into the, uh, into the safe and lock the safe. And at that night, nothing was handed to me. And no evidence was handed to me. Were the infiltrators armed? Definitely. Both, both groups, as you know, there was two, incident, two separate incidents. 
Both, both, of, both groups were armed. No, there was no firearms on them. There was absolutely no firearms found on these people and nothing were handed to me. He said they had received specific instructions to execute large-scale acts of terror, irrespective of race, age or creed. He said all except one had been positively identified as being ANC-trained terrorists. We found that night lead point bullets in the doors, in the seats, because I, went, I was one of the officers who went through the car looking for weapons, and that's all we found. There was no documents, no nothing. Intensive investigations by the security police have enabled them to identify the dead as highly trained ANC terrorists. The, the corpses were dragged out of the back of a police vehicle, and that, I mean, it's just dragged out of the vehicle, straight in the ground. There was no respect shown to the corpses, and they were just dragged in and dropped on the morgue floor next to each other. In this regard, Mr. Flock issued a warning to the ANC and said it would not allow the organization to kill or hurt the people of South Africa. Oh, they was, they said they had a bottle of old brown sherry and uh, this, it's like almost basically so they danced around the corpse, they was walking around making fun of it. And uh, for them it was a happy occasion, just, you know, they've done it, you know, they've got four again, you know. Flock Plus never ever did heat operations. Heat is an assassin, am I right if I say that? Hmm. And in my time, there was no such a thing as a hit or assassin, or assassination. And nobody was allowed to contact any of these victims' parents. Uh, the autopsy was rushed through and they were buried. All clothes were burned. I mean, the one female, uh, you could see on her clothes that uh, she was shot at close range. There was no doubt about it. Her blouse were burnt. There was burnt marks on her blouse. And that's again when I come back with this one officer told me, security branch officer, that this after the firefight was open, this one woman staggered out of the car and uh, one of the other officers just moved in and killed her at Bank, Bank Point Range, just shot her. In his evidence at the judicial inquest, Eugene de Kock said that while he was firing bullets into the activists, he prayed that they would live. He never wanted to kill them. They could have been just ANC activists, for all I know, but there was absolutely no weapons found on these people. These were innocent people who were killed. There was no doubt about it. They were killed. They were assassinated.